Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this image. Now this was lit with just a small torch flashlight, with a white plastic bag as a modifier. Yet it has the look of a much more elaborate high-end lighting setup. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it, with just this small torch and this polythene bag. OK, so starting with uh, the subject, I have these apples which are arranged on this uh, piece of wood here. Uh, then I have my tripod. You will need a tripod to do this. Uh, it's quite essential uh, because you'll be using a very long shutter speed. But I'll come back to that a bit later. OK, so if I just grab the camera here, I'm using this digital SLR which is tethered into Capture One software. And on the front here, I have a 24 to 70 uh, zoom lens. So I'm just going to pop this on the tripod, like that, and we'll just turn the camera on. There we go, and the uh, software has recognized the camera. So I can then use the software to have a look at all the settings on the camera. So up here, you can see that I'm on a 50th of a second, uh, f2.8, 100 ISO. So with these settings, let me just grab a, an image using the house lights for illumination. There we go. So that just shows that everything's working and the whole lot is uh, connected and doing as things it should. OK, so the next thing to do would be to just compose the image. So just looking through the viewfinder, I'll start by just zooming that in. About there somewhere. And we'll just try and focus that up. There we go. Right, so with that now composed, next thing to do would be just to think about uh, a background. So what I'm going to do is put in a C stand at the back here uh, to support a piece of uh, card. And that will form the background to the picture. So here we are, this is the C stand. And I'll just put the arm out, about there somewhere, like so. And I'll just put a piece of card on this. There we are. We just arrange that, something like that. Now, I like to use card for this sort of thing because it gives a very smooth surface. Uh, if you use um, paper, seamless paper, it can be wrinkled, uh, which will give uh, an effect you possibly don't want. Anyway, we'll see how we go. All right, so with all this set as it is, uh, and again, just using the house lights just to get an idea, uh, I'll just grab another image and we'll see what it looks like now. OK, so that's giving the beginnings of a picture. OK, so now with that done, the next thing to do is to think about how I'm going to light it. So as I said earlier, I'm going to use this torch uh, and I'm going to use this polythene bag as a light modifier. Let me show you what I mean. If I were to just use the torch on its own, I just turn this on, and then shine the torch on the subject, it gives a, a very tight beam, which gives very harsh shadows. So what I want to do is make those a lot softer. Now on this particular torch, I can adjust the size of the beam, so I can make it a lot uh, bigger. But again, if you can see the shadows there, are still very hard. But if I use this polythene bag, and I just put the torch inside the bag, like this, just gather it round, this is giving me now a much bigger surface area on the bottom of the bag. So you may be able to see that that makes it a lot softer, even with the house lights on. One of the things to bear in mind is that this is going to take some time to capture the image. You need to integrate the movement over time to give you, in effect, a much, much bigger softbox. So the way I'm going to do that is to reset the uh, camera so that I have uh, a much longer 
shutter uh, opening. So instead of it being a 50th of a second, which is what it is at the moment, I'm going to drop this right down to something like uh, just over three seconds. Now in order to uh, make this work, I'm going to change the aperture from 2.8 right up to 22. Now if I grab an image now with the house lights on at those settings, you can see that I'm getting uh, a reasonable exposure uh, just with the house lights. Which is not really what I want. So in order to make this work, I'm going to have to turn the house lights out. OK, so now, with the house lights out, what I can do is place the torch over the top and keeping it moving, I'm just going to grab an image at the same time as moving uh, the torch over the top of the subject. There we are, and already uh, we're starting to get uh, a much, much better result. So there is a bit of trial and error involved in this. Um, so what I'm going to do is just grab another image uh, so, keeping the torch moving, and then opening the shutter. There we go. Yes, that's a better result. That appears to be working uh, quite well. OK, so that's the foreground captured. So what I'm going to do now is look at capturing the background. So, I'll dispense with the polythene bag. Don't need that bit anymore. And now what I can do is place the torch much closer to the background card and make uh, an interesting shape with it. So this is what I'm going to be doing whilst the shutter on the camera is open. But obviously, again, I'm going to need the house lights out. So I'll do that first. OK, so with the house lights out, what I can do is just Think about where I want to place the beam on the background, like this. And when I think it's in about the right position, I'll open the shutter on the camera. I'm keeping it moving ever so slightly, just so I don't get a sharp edge. OK, so that's a, quite an interesting result. Uh, I think I want to just have a few variations of this, so I'll just do another one. To open the shutter. Keep the torch moving, and maybe one more, just with uh, a bit bigger light to start with. So I'll bring the torch back off the background, and then focus it in like that. Yes, I think that's worked quite well. So now with that captured, uh, I don't need the torch anymore, so I can turn that off. There we go. And I can import those two images, that is the background image and the foreground image, into Photoshop to do the post-production. OK, so here are the images opened up in Photoshop. So this is the foreground image. You can see from this the quality of the shadows that we've got on here. Uh, this is really remarkable, considering it was done just with a torch and a polythene bag. Uh, and then I have a couple of variants of the background. This one and this one. So to blend all these together, what I'm going to do is first of all get Photoshop to make me a stack of the images. So go to File, come down to Scripts, load files into Stack, ask it to add the open file. Uh, and I will ask it to automatically align the source images. We'll just see what sort of a job it makes. Click on OK. And there we go. So here are 
all the images in the stack. If I just go through those, that's what we've got. Right, so the next thing to do is to blend those together. So starting at the top uh, with the foreground image, which is this one, what I'm going to do is change the blend mode from normal to linear dodge add. And what that will do is basically add the uh, background to the foreground. And I can use the same uh, idea again on uh, this intermediate image. So if I click on that one and go from normal to add, it will add uh, the underlying image to it, which I think has gone a little over the top. So yeah, so I think maybe just lighten on this one might be a better result, like that. And obviously these can be uh, turned off or you can change the uh, opacity uh, at will, just to change how the result looks. So there's lots of flexibility uh, to doing things with this approach. I actually think that looks better uh, without so much of this one. So what I'm going to do is just take the opacity down on that layer, just to take it back ever so slightly, something like that. There, that's an interesting result, I think. So with that part of the edit now complete, I'm just going to have a look at options for cropping. So I'm going to pick a ratio of 16 by 9. Uh, and the first thing that I can see here is that um, the background is ever so slightly not straight. So what I'm going to do is just use the straighten command. So I'll just click on that and you just draw a line across the background to let Photoshop straighten it up for me. There we go. Uh, and then I'll just bring the uh, control handles in ever so slightly on each side, just like that. Yes, I think that's pretty good. I'll click on OK. And there we have it. So just using a torch and a polythene bag, we've ended up with a result which mimics what you can do with a very high-end lighting setup. Obviously, just using a normal torch isn't going to give you extremely high colour fidelity. So as long as you're not that bothered about the accuracy of the colours in the subject, this method will work very well. OK, well, I hope you liked watching how I made that image. And if you do like watching these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.